So on today's video I thought I'd talk to you about a wonderful little pop punk band from Minneapolis called The Porcelain Boys and the band that they mutated into, Jettison. Stay tuned! <laughs> When I first hear the Porcelain Boys, I can pinpoint it exactly. Um, it was round at Dell from Vehicle Derek's house. I think it was either before we had a gig at the, uh, the Indian Queen, or it, we, it could have possibly been when we were going out on the Goober Troll Vehicle Derek tour. Uh, and he was playing a couple of uh, bits and pieces, and he played this 7 inch Porcelain Boys, if you were real 7 inch. He said, This is brilliant, have a listen to this. And it was sort of like, Whoa, this is good. And um, it was a really, it was a limited single. There was only like a thousand of them, and I don't think many of them kind of got into the UK um, as such. You know, hand number one thousand uh, things of this little band from Minneapolis that everyone knew nothing about. Um, but I remember we, you know, I managed to track down and, and buy the single myself because it was just, uh, we just loved it. And then I remember about, ooh, it must have been nine or twelve months later, I was actually round at uh, Stu and Cy from Guru Patrol's house on another tour. I um, was just flicking through their 7 inches and went, oh, you've got the Porcelain Boys 7 inch. And, uh, oh, what's this? And we found out, I found out there, that there was a second Porcelain Boys 7 inch called Relive, um, which I knew nothing about. And um, that really intrigued me. So um, I decided to get in touch with, I think it must have been Jason at THD Records who put these out, uh, to see if he wanted to trade. And I managed to sort of trade a few copies at that point. I also remember when I was a student, I blew a bit of my student loan money um, in uh, Rockaboom in Leicester, which was like the independent record store. And one of the things I bought was Lookout's Can of Pork uh, compilation LP. And there was a Porcelain Voice track on that as well, called Sidetrack, from the same session as the second 7 inch. Soon after that, um, we're getting into sort of 1992 here now. Um, I had this plan to do a follow up to Floor 81, where it was going to be one side was going to be American bands and one side was going to be sort of UK bands. So American and Canadian bands on one side and the best of the UK bands on the other. Um, and so I started contacting bands and one of the bands I contacted was the Porcelain Boys. Uh, and I got a letter back from Scott Cook, their bass player, uh, who told me the band had split up. Um, but you know he could send me sort of like some stuff and he sent me this wonderful sort of cassette tape which had everything they recorded uh, and I was really intrigued because it dis I discovered that um, obviously Relive was a two song seven inch but they recorded eight songs um, in that session uh, and I particularly liked the last song on the tape which was called The Last um, and so I asked whether that could go on this forthcoming comp that I was uh, planning um, and so they sent me the dat tape of the track Porcelain Boys Last. So and I've still got it now. So of course if you've seen other videos you'll know that that second comp LP never happened and uh, it actually involved, the little known fact for this video is, I got the badge of shame. Yes, one of the bands on that comp um, sent a letter to Maximum Rock and Roll about me um, because they paid out to uh, do this dat tape and not heard back from me. Um, even though I'd never had a letter back from them sort of after they'd said that that day to, uh, to chase me. So, if you're a member of Toast from uh, Greensville, South Carolina, who was due to be on that thing, I've still got your dat tape here. Uh, and if you want to get in touch with me, I'll send it back to you, okay? Um, so yeah, so yeah, that was my, uh, my badge of shame, was uh, having a letter written about you in Maximum Rock and Roll, so um, not my proudest moment, but you know, I digress. Let's get back to the Porcelain Boys. So for years, I used to play this Porcelain Boys cassette that uh, Scott sent me. It's a, look, it's a C100, 100 minute long cassette, you know, posh stuff. Um, and I played it to death for years. Um, it had also their four track, um, first four track demo, uh, the Fetish for Female demo that they did before the seven inch in July 89. Uh, it says here, then you've got the If You Were Real 7-inch, which they recorded in November 89. 
uh, and then the final eight songs, which two songs were put on that last seven inch, which was recorded in August 1990, it says to here. So obviously the years intervened and um, when I restarted the label in 1999, I soon discovered, um, I thought, well, I'll try and track them down. Maybe a Porcelain Boys sort of uh, release on Boss Tunage might be a good idea. Um, yeah, why I didn't think at the time I could put the seven inch and the eight songs together as an album, but instead decided to do five for nothing. Who knows what was going in my little tiny, naive young brain at that point. Um, but um, yeah, so I think I managed to track down um, Scott on the internet somehow and uh, got in touch with him and he sent me an email to say, oh yeah, we, we actually reformed the Porcelain Boys and we did a record on Pop Kid um, you know, a couple of years ago called Away A While. And it was like, ah, oh, Pop Kid, is that the same label that did Gan's seven inch Blink? Because obviously I knew Gan and you know, I'd know they'd done a, a, a seven inch on Pop Kid. So I managed to track down Alan from Pop Kid as well and said, look, yeah, you know, can I get some copies of this? You know, I'm starting the label up and you know, perhaps we could trade or, or what have you. And so things sort of developed and progressed between myself and Scott and Alan at Pop Kid. Um, and obviously by this time I'd, I'd uh, sorted out with Kaza um, to do Boss Tunage in Japan. So I said, oh, and it turned out he was a massive fan of the Porcelain Boys as well. I said, if you can get copies of this, I can take copies, etc., etc." So I think we worked out um, an idea that with Away A While, because obviously when I got that it was like, great, there's a Porcelain Boys album, I've been waiting this, for this for years. Um, you know, we worked out a deal where I could get sort of like 200 copies of that from him and stick of them, you know, pretty much like I'd done in the early years of Boss Tunes, a similar idea, but then sell them on to Japan as well. Um, and they started to say they were going to be doing a new album um, that was sort of in the works, but they changed the band name. Uh, and they were now called Jettison. I think Jason Nudson, who played drums on the um, Away A While album, uh, had been replaced by a guy called Nick Larson. So it was still Eric and Scott from the original lineup. Tom Spence, who was the um, in the first lineup of the Porcelain Boys, had sort of left when they reformed. Um, so yeah, so plans were put in place with Jettison, and obviously I remember being really excited to be sort of like doing a you know an actual release by by this band that uh, you know I'd loved for for a few years, um, and I think Search for the Gun Girl came out pretty early in 2000, and um, yeah, and um, it, it was cracking, and also to sort of round the story off, Last, which was the song I wanted to put on the comp LP, was actually re-recorded in the final song on that album. Uh, so yeah, so it all came about full circle. Jettison sort of carried on very far past releasing that CD from memory and I did lose touch with Scott. I haven't heard from him in you know, years. Um, it'd be kind of nice to do a Porcelain Boys retrospective at some point I guess. Um, I don't think there was ever, I might have suggested it, I, I honestly can't remember now. The, what you have to remember as we get into the Ink Splat logo years there was a heck of a lot of releases happening by a heck of a lot of bands and some of it my memory is a little bit uh, more sparse than it is perhaps on the earlier stuff. But you know, we'll get there. But I probably think at the time with Away A While coming out and they'd actually re-recorded some of those tracks that the idea of, you know, releasing the old stuff, um, you know, was sort of not really an option. But of course, Porcelain Boys as well would um, snowball my involvement with Minneapolis bands over the next few years as well. Um, very much like uh, Rise and the Sexuals um, had led to the whole Canadian connection expanding. Um, the first expansion that would happen, obviously soon after this, would be the release of the first Pocket Genius record, which Jason, who'd um, drummed on away a while, uh, was in that band, and that's how they got in touch with me originally. 
so yeah, so from the Porcelain Boys, more stuff from Minneapolis was to follow on the label. So there you go, a brief uh, a history of uh, my involvement with the Porcelain Boys. So yeah, if you're a fan of Descendants or Big Drill Car, um, Porcelain Boys is kind of one I would highly flag up that if you're not familiar with them, you go and check them out. Uh, and likewise the Jettison uh, CD as well because you know it, it's porcelain boys really in, in all but name. That's it for this one. I'll see you on the next one. Do it. <laughs>